The air in the small Nigerian church was warm, filled with the scent of perfume, sweat, and freshly ironed Sunday clothes. The choir's voices echoed beautifully as they sang the final hymn before the sermon. People swayed, clapped, and sang along, their faces lit with smiles. Pastor Jeremiah, tall and broad-shouldered, stood behind the pulpit, waiting for the music to stop. His piercing eyes scanned the crowd, and his face was stern. When the last note ended, he stepped forward, gripping the edges of the pulpit. My brothers and sisters, I have a question for you today, he began, his voice ringing through the room. How many of you come to church just to play? The congregation shifted uncomfortably. Some exchanged glances, others pretended not to hear. You think this is a place to show off your new clothes, to gossip? To daydream while I preach. He slammed his palm on the pulpit. Let me tell you, God is watching. The church fell silent. Even the children stopped fidgeting. After today, Pastor Jeremiah continued, his voice dropping to a menacing tone. You will never behave anyhow in church again. A murmur rippled through the crowd. What is he talking about? whispered sister blessing to her neighbor i don't know but it sounds serious the woman replied clutching her purse tightly pastor jeremiah raised his hand for silence brother james switch on the projector brother james a young man in thick glasses hurried to the back of the church he connected the projector to a laptop and the white sheet behind the pulpit lit up. The congregation watched curiously. Nobody had ever seen a projector used in church before. The screen flickered to life. At first, it was blank, but soon a video began to play. It showed a man sitting at a table counting money. Gasp filled the room. That's Deacon Matthew, someone whispered. They could match you who sat in the front row turned red. The video showed him taking money from the church's tight box and slipping it into his pocket. Then it showed him buying expensive clothes and eating at fancy restaurants. It's a lie, Deacon Matthew shouted, jumping to his feet. This video is fake. But the congregation was already murmuring. The video moved on. This time, it showed Sister Blessing, the lead singer of the choir. She was practicing with the choir, smiling sweetly. But then the video cut to her whispering behind someone's back. She thinks she can sing better than me. Her voice is like a frog's croak, she said in the video. Laughter erupted, but Sister Blessing's face turned pale. One by one, the video exposed secrets. A young man skipping service to play football. A woman gossiping about her neighbor's daughter. A boy stealing snacks from the Sunday school. The church grew things. Nobody knew whose secret would appear next. Then, the video changed. The screen turned dark for a moment. And Pastor Jeremiah's voice echoed. God doesn't just see your past. He said, he sees your future. The screen lit up again, showing scenes of the future. A young woman, Gauzy, was crying in a hospital. A doctor stood beside her, shaking his head. I'm sorry, the doctor said in the video. Your child didn't make it. Gauzy screamed from the back of the church. This is not me. I don't have any child. Another scene appeared. He showed Mr. Obina, a wealthy businessman, sitting in a police station. You are under arrest for fraud. An officer said, handcuffing him. Obina's jaw dropped. This is impossible. The scenes grew darker. Car accidents, broken marriages, people losing their jobs, 
Fear spread through the congregation like wildfire. At the back of the church sat Adora, a university student known for her sharp mind. She wasn't like the others. While most people were shaking with fear, Adora was calm, watching the video carefully. How is this possible? She thought. How can a projector show the future? Something about the video didn't feel right. Pastor Jeremiah seemed too confident, as if he already knew what the video would reveal. I need to find out what's really going on, Adora decided. After the service, Adora stayed behind, pretending to help clean the church. She watched as Brother James packed up the projector and laptop. Brother James, she said sweetly, that video was very powerful. How does it work? Brother James hesitated. It's, it's God's power, he said nervously. Adora smiled. Of course, but can you show me the laptop? I want to see how it's connected to the projector. Brother James, flattered by her interest, explained how the projector was set up. But when Adora tried to touch the laptop, he quickly closed it. It's the church's property, he said, his voice firm. Adora's suspicion grew. She decided to return to the church that evening when nobody was around. That night, Adora snuck into the church. She found the laptop and opened it. To her shock, she discovered a folder labeled Sunday videos. Inside were files with names like Matthew Stealing and Blessing Gossiping. Adora clicked on one of the files. It was the same video from earlier, but it had been edited using video software. She realized Pastor Jeremiah and Brother James had been recording private conversations and creating fake scenes to scare people. This is wrong, Adora whispered. They are using fear to control the church. The next Sunday, Adora stood up during the service. Pastor Jeremiah, I have something to say, she announced. The congregation turned to look at her. The video you showed last week was fake, she said boldly. I found the files on the laptop. You and Brother James made it to scare us. Gas filled the church. Pastor Jeremiah tried to deny it, but Adora held up her phone. She had recorded the proof. The church erupted into chaos. Some people demanded that Pastor Jeremiah step down. Others defended him, saying he was only trying to help people repent. In the end, Pastor Jeremiah admitted the truth. I wanted to teach you all a lesson, he said. Too many of you behave anyhow in church. I thought if I scared you, you would change. But I see now that I went too far. The church forgave him. But things were never the same. People became more cautious about their actions, both in church and outside. As for Adora, she became a hero in the community. People admired her courage and honesty. And from that day on, nobody dared to behave carelessly in church again.